Today on Security Expert Online, we welcome Rick Mountfield, who has recently been appointed as the Chief Executive of the Security Institute. Rick, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. I realise you've only been in post for a, a matter of days now, uh, but tell us about your early career, because you've gone from being a junior soldier uh, in the Army to now being a Chief Executive. How have you done that? Well, I did start in Junior Leaders Regiment Royal Armoured Corps in 1988, as a just before my 17th birthday. Um, it set me up for a career. I wanted to be a policeman, I'll point that out, but they wouldn't let me join. They sold me to join the army till I was 25 and come back. But I ended up staying for 22 years. I'm now a pensioner, and my last paid day in the army was the 11th of the 11th, 2011. Gosh. That's... I started with the institute, I could say, two weeks ago. Um, but I've been a member for six more over six years now so I understand the Institute uh, inside and out and I'm very excited about this opportunity. So now you're on the other side of the fence as the Chief Executive rather than a member you've got a good feel for what members want. What are the members benefits you've got at the moment that you offer? Um, the benefits that I, I have valued and, and I'm not going to say that all the benefits are perfect because we have some work to do and there's always improvements that can be made. Uh, but if, speaking as a member, because a member six years, I need to see chief executive for two weeks. Um, membership of the institute for me is is external valid, validation and peer reviewed um, accreditation. For me to say that I'm a security expert uh, and that it's my peers that decide I'm an expert, that means a lot more to me than just saying that I'm an expert because I believe it. Um, we do get a lot of free tickets to events. So well, as a member last year, I gained access to the R3 Summit, the Global Resilience Forum, uh, Cyber Briefing Breakfasts, and a number of other events that when I totaled up the cost, it, what it would have cost me as a private sector attendee would have been about 1,800 pounds. Um, and that was all for my membership of 170 pounds. Wow, that's good value. Yeah. And how's recruiting going? Have you got a good flow? Recruiting has always been steady. We always have a steady flow of new recruits coming in, people leaving the forces, the police, people qualifying from um, undergraduate study even, coming into membership at the Institute because they want to belong to a body that's going to keep them aware of constant threats and, and current um, mitigation options. And you touch on an important point there, because often people come into the security industry having had a first career uh, in the army or the, the, the police or whatever. How do you cope with that and how are you attracting young members to come in? Well, we do have a young members group I'm working with, already have started working with the young members group and trying to promote the conversion of our student members, which are number about 400 from various universities, uh, University College London, King's College London, Nottingham, Portsmouth, uh, Leicester, all of these young people, they are very interested in becoming members of the Institute to help them with their academic study, having a point of contact to ask questions of with their vocational experience. But when they leave uh, academic study after a master's degree, generally then they come into the workplace, they need advice and the Institute can offer that connection to the wider community that they won't have fostered through a 30-year career in the police as others may have done. Rick, at the highest level we now have the Chartered Security Professional Qualification. How does that work? Um, well, Chartered Security Professional for me was all about um, the highest level of accreditation. A Chartered Security Professional, much like a Chartered Accountant or a Chartered Surveyor, Chartered Engineer, is deemed to have be at the, the pinnacle of your professional life. Um, I embarked on my master's degree purely to achieve chartered status. So there are only still 115 at last count uh, accredited chartered security professionals. They're not all based in the UK, they're all over the world. And, and now I'm one of the interviewers, so I get to sit down and, and interview new applicants for chartered status, which has been a delight for me because I get to meet some really interesting people. I bet. Mm. But what does it actually mean for them? What do they have to do what, to, to prove to you that they're the right quality? They're measured against five core competencies. Uh, ultimately, communications and strategic level uh, leadership, to put it in a, in a nutshell, they have to be leading at a strategic level. 
They need to be uh, signed up to an ethical code, which is what the Charter does, tells them that they're, they're sticking to a, a, an ethical code of conduct and that they are professionally developing continuously, which is essential for all security professionals to stay on top of their game. Again, it's about peer reviewed. If the Chartered Security Register admits you, then nobody can be in doubt that you are working at the highest level. And the Institute is, is clearly being proactive because a couple of years ago they produced a very uh, detailed prospectus about the way forward in terms of a document. Um, is that proving to be a good baseline, a good foundation to build upon? I'm very grateful for the manifesto that was released a couple of years ago. Uh, it really gave the vision to the Security Institute and, and for me as the Chief Executive, my, my sole aim is to own the vision of the Institute and then promote it across all the membership. Um, and honestly, I believe in the vision because as a member, that's uh, why I was stayed in, worked all the way to fellow. But the manifesto lays down what our key priorities are. The manifesto gave birth to the Commonwealth, the Security Commonwealth, which uh, the Institute has instigated but has handed over because we don't want to be seen as, as taking over the whole industry. So long as people are professionally developing, professionalizing our industry, then it's important that the Commonwealth goes forward in somebody else's hands. And so it was taken forward and it um, is being very well received. It's making good changes and challenging the status quo, but ultimately the aim of it all is to make the security industry respected um, and valued where currently common thinking is that it's not. Yeah, interesting point. We've, we live in dangerous times where terrorism is uh, almost a weekly event now. Crime figures are rising after falling for about 10 years and we seem to be losing the cyber battle. We've just had a major attack on the NHS. How do you think the industry is going to respond to that? Well, this is resilience. How we respond to these events um, defines us. These are not black swan events. Cyber attacks have been happening. This particular attack is not within my specialist sphere. I'm not a cyber security expert, but there will always be events like this. And the way we cope with them and bounce back is, is the key thing. And security providing a resilience spin for businesses is enabling businesses to carry on trading. And that's the key message that we need to get across to big business. Security can enable the business. It's not necessarily the restriction that you think it might be. And in, the, in fact, it used to be seen as a grudge purchase, something that you rather had to do rather than something you wanted to do to protect your organisation against these new threats. Well, unfortunately, that's always the way, isn't it? Security can only be measured against its successes when it defeats an attack. Um, if, a, if an attack doesn't happen because the security is effective, then you never will measure it against what could have been. Unfortunately, it takes a terrible event to happen, like a cyber attack or um, a marauding attack or a physical burglary or something of such that for you to realise that if you'd had better security, that you wouldn't have been the target and the impact wouldn't have been so great. So it's a difficult one. Technology plays a major part in the security world at the moment and uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, etc. are on the future horizon. How do you think they're going to affect the industry? The industry has to roll with um, technological advances and uh, I read an article that uh, stated technology is advancing, doubling in advancement every two years. If we don't stay on top of uh, advancement then you're never going to be as effective as the threats that you have to counter. Um, it's important that we embrace all levels of technology and, and see how we can adapt them to be an ally to security. So you mentioned member benefits. What about the annual conference? Does the Institute hold a conference? The Institute does hold an annual conference. It's uh, our major event of the year. It's on the 3rd of October this year at the Armouries in the City of London. Um, Andrew Nichols, my um, uh, good friend, is, is the guy that's leading with this right now. And it's really shaping up to be a significant uh, event with some great speakers and great topics. And we're very excited about it. Rick, we know you're facing your first challenge of the first board meeting tomorrow with four or five new uh, directors. 
and we wish you the best of luck and we wish you the Institute well in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you.